Yovan Buha. Buha. Yo, yo, I'm Yovan Buha, Lakers beat writer for The Athletic, and welcome to episode 12 of Buha's Block. Uh, today, I have the pleasure of being joined by the Tyrion Lannister of the Los Angeles Lakers. The man drinks and he knows things. Uh, Aaron Larsoul, a podcaster and the host of All Access Lakers on Playback TV. Aaron, my brother, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm well, thank you for having me. And I, I didn't know that it was the 12th episode, but that is my lucky number. So it is it is okay. perfect. Thank you for that. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> and it, it's always fun to have you uh, on, on any of my shows. So I'm happy to be able to repay the favor because you are as... Um, may, did I start this? You are the people's champ. So I don't know. Did I? I don't know if you, I, if you did. I started that. But yeah. So you, now you you're and, the people's yeah. champ. Everywhere, everywhere. I haven't you done go. it in a minute. I, I gotta. Yeah, I gotta yeah we'll, we'll get we'll get you back. Yeah, we'll get you back. It's a uh, in the playoffs maybe time. if what well, we'll see how time. how much longer the season goes, uh, which is what I wanted to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, so feels like the the sky has been falling in Lakerland for the last few days. You had LeBron out on Sunday against the Timberwolves with flu like symptoms. AD gets poked in the eye, uh, re-aggravates that eye injury that he suffered a couple weeks earlier. He ends up leaving after the first quarter. Uh, Lakers lose that game. And then there is the must-win scenario against the Warriors for the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. And the Lakers end up losing that game. LeBron plays through the flu-like symptoms. Almost has a 30-point triple-double, but it is not enough because Anthony Davis is out. LA falls to 2-4 and four without him, but... Really two and six, in my opinion, because yep. I count yep. the, the the Minnesota and Golden State losses uh, previously when when he exited after the first quarter. So mm -hmm. a lot to to kind of cover within the last few days. But what have your thoughts been in terms of just how the last few days have played out? I think a, a big talking point has been the losses earlier in the season in December and January kind of coming back to haunt the Lakers, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Spurs, the Mavericks, some of those losses. Uh, that they, they probably shouldn't have had post IST. And then I was kind of thinking about it though. And it's like, not much has changed. Like they, they are now locked into the playing tournament and there was a, uh, albeit unlikely scenario that they jumped to number six. A lot of things were going to have to go right. That was probably not going to happen. Uh, really the, the fear now is potentially playing Denver in round one, but like within the last few days, like what, what have your thoughts been on, on how things have unfolded? sort of the missed opportunity of previous losses earlier in the season and the Lakers path forward now uh, potentially being most likely in the 9-10 and, and even number 10 if some things in the West don't break their way. So, yeah, I mean, this is why you can't give away games earlier in the year. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I don't know. This is kind of a, a symptom of fandom where – you only look at the games that your team gave away. And if we had just won those three or four more games, we, okay. Yeah. The Lakers probably stole some along the way too. Right. Yeah. Um, so at this point, I think teams are what their record says. They are. The Lakers are a pretty good basketball team, but a pretty good basketball team doesn't get you a ton in the West. I think it's most disappointing because or the last few days feel most disappointing because, you know, the Lakers were really hot coming into into those two games. I think it was like eight of nine or nine of 10, yeah. something like that. And th look, those are Minnesota and the Warriors are both good. And those are games you can lose even in the best of circumstances, but with LeBron not being there uh, for Minnesota and then AD not being there for, for the Warriors and, uh, and LeBron being sick, even though to your point, he played really well because the Lakers hadn't made up any ground, you know, going winning eight of 10 or nine of 10. And then you look at the standings and everybody else in the West is, seven and three, eight and two, nine and one. So you're not the, the late, the part that feels disappointing is through all that good work, the Lakers didn't make up enough ground to feel okay about dropping the last two. Um, and then with, with Denver's win against Minnesota uh, on Wednesday night, it looks like Denver is going to be the one seed unless barring something catastrophic for them losing to somebody they shouldn't it looks like they're going to be the one seed. And then there was a time, you know, a few days ago and you and I talked about this where I thought that I definitely thought the Warriors were going to, and then possibly the Lakers would not be all that interested in winning um, their, their game the other day against each other. 
because both because everybody wants to play the Kings. And so when the Kings were were up, you know, whatever 20 something it was against OKC, I think that encouraged both the Lakers and the Warriors to kind of go after that game. LeBron didn't get to the arena until much later, much closer to uh, to tip off than he normally would. So I think that changed things um, because I think both teams were pretty comfortable being in the 9-10 matchup if it was Sacramento. Um, but then once Sacramento was way ahead, they ended up losing. But once they were way ahead, you know, I think both teams went after it. But now the the like punishment for that is looks like Denver in the first round. And I would say for everybody, you know, if you want to ask me how far can the Lakers go, how far can the Warriors go, how far can Phoenix go, basically anybody, it's until they play Denver in the West. So I think the Lakers can beat anybody unless they have to play Denver. So if the Lakers, if the last, you know, the, the punishment of the last couple of days is the Lakers end up in the nine, 10 game, whether it's nine or 10, whether it's, you know, at golden state or home against Sacramento or whatever it is, the, 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 the pitfalls of the last couple of days, the punishment of the last couple of days is here come the champs. Yeah. I mean, I think you just hit on a couple of, of good points. Like one, uh, I went through and skimmed through the schedule and, and basically concluded that to me, there were about, eight-ish games off the top of my head that the Lakers could have won arguably with a better starting lineup, better rotations, a couple of things going their way, but that does not factor in the games that they won that, I mean, they, they have one of the best, I believe they're tied with Dallas for the best uh, record in terms of crunch time games, yeah, clutch, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, clutch games in, in mm -hmm. the league. So like there have obviously been things that, and that is a testament to LeBron and, and AD and, uh, mm -hmm. just the, the, the team's chemistry and, and crunch time, but like that's also things breaking their way. Like a lot of times it's a a call or, a, you know, the, the ball goes out of bounds. Like there's just a lot of factors that kind of go into winning a game in a clutch situation. So more often than not, they've gone in the Lakers' favor. So there are several games uh, we could probably go through where you would, you could argue like the Lakers shouldn't have won that game, but right. they ended up winning it. So I think it it all evens out. To, to some extent, but I do think the Lakers left at least a few games on the table and yeah. you add a few more wins to their record and they're right there with Dallas or New Orleans for like that five, six range. So I think um, the, 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 yeah. the important part about what you were saying there. So when I say like the Lakers lost some that they shouldn't have and probably stole some that that works, like if you are controlling what you can control and to your point, the Lakers did not settle on what appears to be the optimization of lineups until much later in the season. And that's one thing that the Lakers, you know, that's not a bounce here or there or luck, uh, you know, going for you or against you. That's something that theoretically the Lakers could control. And in my opinion, didn't until too recently. Yeah. And I mean, we, we could address like i mean cam reddish was the starter until game 41 torian prince was the starter until game 51 and, and both guys missed some games so it wasn't the the full slate but uh that right there I, I think is like those guys are to me torian is more of like an eighth and ninth man cam is not a rotation player on a serious championship contender or even probably a serious playoff team so uh like those two things alone i, I think kind of point to uh some of the the issues that have gone on through the first 80 games of the, the regular season. Uh, but I, I, again, like, I, I just don't like, yes, they, they lost out on being the six seed and realistically it's going to be hard to even be number seven. And that does make the path tougher, but I, I still think even with like, had they maybe split those games, let's say you beat the wolves or, I mean, the, the warriors game was more important just because the tiebreaker, but right. there's still, we're, we're more likely going to be like the eight seed, like it was probably they're probably going to be eight or nine now it's more of a range of like eight to ten uh mm -hmm. so the, the floor is a little bit lower but i don't know if that much actually changed uh, but the denver thing is like i mean if, i, no, if I don't know how much changed for one, the lakers right because i don't know how much changed for the lakers because we didn't know that part until until last night as we're recording this i don't know when everybody's going to listen to this in podcast land but last uh, night so we we're, were dropping this. this friday friday morning so okay by that time oh wednesday we, yeah yeah so wednesday yeah. as as you're listening to this you know the, the the tuesday game between the lakers and warriors like yeah you kind of I, the focus was trying to play the kings i'm not i mean everybody wants to play the kings because 
and so like how much changed well the lakers you know it was probably eight or nine to your point and now it's probably nine or ten and ten looks maybe most likely that wasn't as fatal a blow until wednesday night as you listen to this when denver basically secured the one seed right if 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 Denver had lost that game to Minnesota and the, then as the two seed, it doesn't seem like I mean yes, you want to have two chances to win instead of one chance to win as the nine ten, but at least it's so if you if you move up to eight seven in the year in the seven or eight game, you have the chance to not play Denver, but you didn't know that until until the Denver Minnesota game. So I think I think it's the Minnesota Denver game that is the bigger problem, a result that is the bigger problem than anything the Lakers did or didn't do. Yeah. And that, that's a, that's a good point that I haven't really seen made uh, at least on, on the, the parts of Twitter that I check. So the scary dark holes. Yes. Basically all of Twitter. Yeah. That's bit, Yeah. Um, you should see my for you page. Uh, I, but, that terrifies me, brother. Uh, so you mentioned Sacramento and I think, we can agree that Sacramento is the most advantageous matchup right now, even with the Lakers history against them of losing seven of the past eight matchups over the last couple of years with the Mata Sabonis winning the head to head matchup against 80 uh, over the last couple of years uh, with the Aaron Fox being a matchup problem for the Lakers perimeter defenders. Like with that context, I still think no Malik Monk, no Kevin Herter uh, with, with Sacramento blowing some big leads in a recent games uh they, they blew that 20 point lead to the knicks they blew the 20 point lead to the thunder like they've kind of been a, a bit frazzled here down the stretch and, and sort of been i want to say choking but sort of choking away the lead that they had in the standings over some of these teams so i, I think what we'll, we'd we'll put sacramento as the best possible matchup uh, again mm-hmm. even with the the, the head to head context but the, looking at the other three teams new orleans golden state and phoenix how would you rank those from best to worst possible matchup for the Lakers as the, you know, they start to look at a potential path. Mm -hmm. And of course, like they're probably more likely to play the Warriors or the Pelicans. Uh, Phoenix has sort of separated themselves depending on how things go the last couple of games. I think new Orleans has a little bit of a tougher. Well, I guess Phoenix technically has the tougher. They're all playing each other. Yeah. They're all playing each other. Like Minnesota might rest that final game though. If if the one seed's already decided like things, I don't know. I, I, I think they're but, less but what like, about three, but then they have to worry about OKC. It's true. Them for, it's true. For two, so three, yeah. a, a lot is, is undetermined, but how do you view those three teams and, and how would you rank them? So I, after Sacramento and you alluded to a lot of their reasons why Sacramento, um, the Lakers have a matchup problem with Sacramento, even put Sabonis and AD aside. The Lakers are not equipped to stay in front of, uh, Malik Monk and De'Aaron Fox, but with no Malik Monk, that changes that calculation. So I agree with you that the, the Kings are probably the most favorable matchup. After that, I would pick the Pelicans, um, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, well, the main one is who knows what's up with BI. It seems like he'll be back, but he's not back yet. And we're running out of games here. Um, and they don't have the playoff experience. Um, Zion has never played in the playoff game. CJ McCollum has, but um, Zion hasn't. And the Lakers pretty definitively took care of the Pelicans. What was it? The semifinals of the in-season tournament. Yeah. Um, And just the playoff inexperience. Like I just trust LeBron to diagnose all of that. And in a one game setting, you know, just take, just take uh, the Pelicans apart. Although, for the the season in its entirety, on balance, the Pelicans have been the best team of all five of the t- teams we're talking yes. about. Yes, <laughs> um, and then I think it's kind of a toss up. Um, I guess I would rather play Phoenix than I would rather play Phoenix than the world, just because Steph Curry is like. Well, you, you saw uh, it the other day, yeah. I mean, but also yes, also that. Yes. But the Lakers were three and two against the Suns this year, and one and three against the Warriors this year, and the one win was the double overtime game. Now, to be fair. LeBron hasn't been there, all of it. AD has been there for, um, what, two games and one quarter of the four games. So, yeah, I just, I I would say, yeah, I think Phoenix and the Warriors are a toss-up. I guess I would rather play Phoenix. Um, 
but I think those two are a toss up. I, I, but I think Sacramento is in a tier by itself and then the Pelicans in a tier by itself. And then you do whatever you want with the last two. We're largely in agreement. I would flip Phoenix and Golden State. And I probably should have prefaced the question with this, but this is assuming going on the road and winning you know, mm. in, in these teams' arenas. Um, like, I, I think I would pick, I'd probably pick the Lakers to beat any of these teams with home court advantage. I just, the, the odds of the Lakers actually having home court against any of these teams, like realistically, it's probably going to be Sacramento or Golden State if the Lakers end up like eight or nine. Uh, depending on again, th there's a lot of different ways this can all play out, and that's kind of the confusing part. Like, I'm packing for yeah, you Memphis got the open ended, and, I, and I'm like, I the one way as of now, I'm, yeah. I'm coming back uh Monday afternoon, but like, I might be flying out Monday night or Tuesday morning, and I could be going to Phoenix, San Francisco, Sacramento, or New Orleans. Yeah, but if well, I'm, yes, I'm going but, to New Orleans, I might as well stay there, honestly. We'll, we'll see how that, I mean, yes, out. and then like. And then you might be going from New Orleans or Phoenix or Golden State to another place. And then from there, straight to Denver. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a wild week. But I, I my delineation with it is, so I, I agree, Sacramento 1, New Orleans 2. I would put Golden State 3 just because I still think the Lakers have a front court, a significant front court advantage in that matchup. And mm -hmm. to your point, LeBron didn't play in the second matchup. Uh, AD left early in the third matchup. That was still relatively close in the fourth quarter. It was kind of a fake comeback, but like the Lakers were within striking distance uh, late in the fourth in that one. And then this last one, uh, not having AD again. Like I, I just think, like if, if you're telling me AD is out for the matchup, obviously I'm going to pick the Warriors. But uh, look, uh, if, if AD is back, matchup, like if AD's out for the match, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a wrap, but. Uh, so I, I would put now I, I've been high on Phoenix all year. I think I'm one of the last remaining people with, with stock in the Suns just because I still think like if they could somehow get six or seven and it is OKC or Minnesota, I could easily see them going on a conference finals run. Like oh, I, I, I still I pick them against OKC or Oklahoma. Uh, okay. OKC or Minnesota. I take Phoenix. So, okay. So, so you're, yeah. So we're in agreement there. So I, yeah. I also look at like the, the Lakers three wins against them all came in early December or earlier in the season. Whereas mm -hmm. the two most recent matchups were decisive Suns wins. Yes. Uh, and like the, they had the one game uh, where they came into LA and just kicked the shit out of them. Yeah, won that one the easily by yeah. the 20, <laughs> like it was over by the third quarter, early third quarter. Yes. And then the most recent one in Phoenix, uh, I forgot, uh, you know, Van Vando was obviously out, and I, I want to yeah, say there might have been someone else. Right? Yeah, late February. Yeah, there might have been someone else out, but Phoenix didn't have Bradley Beal or Eric Gordon, so it kind of was a little bit of a wash. But the Lakers, I think they, they got stomped in that one as well. So, like, I, I just look at it like the 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 more recent sample size we have in that matchup is Phoenix kind of figuring things out and, and just their ISO scoring and, and over the top shot making just being at a level that. Mm -hmm. I think and if you're telling me Vando's back and, and that's still like we were supposed to get an update this week, it's now Thursday going on Friday. No update. No, there's going to be uh, uh, update two... Monday. Update Monday. Okay. Update Monday. So update Monday. that's after the regular season. <laughs> uh, and at that point, it's does he come back at the play? -in? Does he come back in the playoffs or is he, is he done? And uh, either, like, I, I mean, acclimating, and we, we saw last time, like when, when he came back initially from the heel injury, it took him yeah. a good several weeks to look like himself and for the team to ramp him up and, and reacclimate him fully. So Lakers don't have that type of, of ramp up process now. It's like, no. it's go time. It's, you're going to have to play like six or seven guys in those playing games. And theoretically, like the best version of Vando is one of those six or seven guys, but him coming off this injury potentially like, it's i don't know so I see. uh yeah the the fact I that we haven't that. heard anything on that is not a good sign and uh then just looking at the matchup like i just don't i don't love the perimeter defense against KD Booker and Beal they were the one team last year to push Denver to 6 they've played Denver well again and and not like that's more of a matchup specific thing for for those two head to head but I just then I mean uh Phoenix scares me. I mean Denver scares me too. But uh, so I would, I would go with Golden State three, Phoenix four. But my line is like, I think if the Lakers draw at Sacramento at New Orleans, I'm gonna pick them. I oh, think yeah. if they get at Golden State or at Phoenix, I, I think they're gonna lose in those two 
matchups. Now, again, I think if, if they're home for any of the matchups, I would pick them at home against any of those four teams. But looking at a potential at Golden State in like the 9-10 or at, you know, maybe you, you win the 9-10 game now at Phoenix, uh, I think in both instances, I would favor those two teams at home. Yeah, the one complicating factor, I mean, I think I agree that Phoenix probably has the highest ceiling of any of these teams. The one complicating factor, though, is that I don't know. I think the reason why I said the Warriors are probably like who I would like the least if I'm the Lakers is because of all the teams that are not going to be intimidated at all. And I don't think Phoenix would be much, but of all the teams that are not going to be intimidated at all by staring staring at LeBron James across the way is going to be the Warriors. Like they've, we've done this before they're going to think. Um, but the other complicating factor is like, I don't, I don't know that you're saying if, if the Lakers have the home games, you would, I don't know. And that if they have to go to golden state, I mean, the Warriors have been significantly better this season on the road than at home. So that's kind of an also sort of a complicating um, factor, but I, I do agree with you that, I think the scariest team out of all of them is is Phoenix. I mean the Lakers too, but of the Lakers yeah. possible opponents. I think the the Phoenix is I think Phoenix has the highest ceiling of any of them. Um for me with the Lakers it's just they, it's they like their home road great. splits have been as dramatic as any team in the top 10. Yes. Uh yes. so like they've been I think they have the fourth best home record in the West, but then they the road have has been rough. by far the worst. <laughs> They're the only team below 500 uh the uh, in the top rough. 10. So it's like, and even this last stretch of like, they were, I mean, again, like you, you play the teams in, uh, in front of you and, and you, yep. you know, you play your schedule, but Memphis, Brooklyn, Toronto, Washington, like it's, and even Milwaukee, like that, I'm not going to take away that that was one of their best ones of the season. So to be clear, I'm not taking away from it, but Milwaukee's had some terrible losses lately. The vibes have just been off with that group. Like bad. they lost to Memphis, Doc, to Doc Washington, River special. To, like they've been blowing games against yeah. The, the teams the, the Lakers corpse, were just beating so like of Toronto, the, like the the Lakers beating the Bucks is kind of aging. Not as it's not as a it's not yeah. aging as well. Just with like the context of look who Milwaukee's been losing to. Uh, yeah. So with that said, like I mean the Lakers have some notable wins this year on the on the road, like um, beating OKC, beating the Clippers. I mean the uh, Celtics win without LeBron and Celtics. AD. Yeah, right. Uh, so. Knicks, um, like mm -hmm. the, the Warriors, double overtime. Like they, they have mm -hmm. some really good road wins, but overall, they have not been a good road team. And right. that's what gives me pause of like, I, I trust the Warriors and the Suns at home to probably take care of those matchups. Uh, but it, it, I mean, I'm not saying they would win. I'm not, they wouldn't be heavy favorites necessarily. I'm just like, I, I would favor those two teams, 55, 45, whatever, yeah. in, in a potential 7 8 or 9 10 matchup. Uh, but Let's just say hypothetically that so, the Lakers... so what you're what you're telling me is we're all rooting for yesterday as you listen to this and you'll know the result already but everybody's rooting for the Pelicans against the Kings tonight is what you're saying or last night I think as you so listen to this yeah I, th I think you you should be rooting for the Kings and they do now the the one tricky part with it is the Kings hold the tiebreaker over the Lakers where the Lakers currently hold the tiebreaker over the Pelicans and if they win that final matchup would mm, you know, yeah. seal that yeah. but. I think I'd I'd rather take my chances if I'm the Lakers. It's gonna be it's unlikely they play them in the seven eight. It would have to be the nine ten. But right. if there's a way to and then now again, if you get in the nine ten, you're you're guaranteeing Denver. So I, I would take my chances against any other team and and try and like the Lakers need to be in the seven eight. Like and, and there it's possible, but yes, it's looking on like like it's looking unlikely. It's still possible though. Uh things can you know break their way. Like if Golden it, State Need to, I mean, need look, the to playing drop Portland one. tonight yeah. with, with no uh, Draymond, no, no Draymond. Clay, and Gary Payton, the second, I believe, is questionable. Uh, so, like, on paper, that is a game that the, the Warriors should win, even without those guys. But, like, if Portland plays spoiler, all of a sudden, yeah. the Lakers yeah. went out. Now you're potentially in the 9 10. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the, so, we need, you need either, I mean, Sacramento to lose a couple or the Pelicans to lose a couple. And, and, the uh the warriors to drop one and then you can get to eight yeah yeah so it, there's still a path but it, it however unlikely there, there's still a path uh but let's just say hypothetically that the lakers season ends at some point within the next two-ish weeks be it nine ten game seven eight game uh eight nine or eight ten whatever game 
mm-hmm. or in the first round of the playoffs. Like how much in, in from your vantage point does the manner in which they lose influence the team's uh plan i guess that this offseason in terms of like do we need to make some big changes do we need to run it back mm-hmm. and just hope for better health make some upgrades around the fringes like how, how does the manner in which they lose impact all of that i think it's a good question and a fair question i don't know that i have a great answer but i think it's i think it's an interesting question because it's kind of similar to last season like i i think this lakers team is better than last year's lakers team um but last year's lakers team like kind of got a good draw and made it to the conference finals right got the doors blown off them in the conference finals i mean the closest uh, closest sweep in, closest sweep in nba closest history. sweep in nba history yeah um and so that kind of made it feel like and then the the what the team looked like after the all-star after the trade deadline with the new pieces that were added last year and then that run it kind of felt like a continuous positive momentum so it makes sense to you know in essence run it back and then this year the lakers are better than last year but the competition is so much better that it doesn't feel like that so i don't know i think a lot of it is going to hinge on delo's um player option i don't suspect he'll pick it up but Mm -hmm. excuse me you know what what delo decides to do and bringing him back and if the lakers can <clears throat> excuse me reach an agreement with him i think that's part of it um you know rob talked about the flexibility um in the off season um and the lakers kind of being able to decide he didn't say this specifically but talked about the flexibility in the off season and the lakers having some optionality as far as going out and, and getting other pieces um through trade but because of the you know the the signing of of austin and vando and rui and delo depending on what delo decides to do there like this is not a team and and gabe who at them you know the mid-level the full mid-level for most of the full mid-level for a couple of years is not a team that's going to be able to go and you know go into the free agent pool and really find guys that are going to make any difference it's going to be as you said you know kind of uh, working around the fringes. Um, I think that it's going to be a question of do the Lakers decide to cash in all of the draft capital chips and and try to go find like another difference maker who that would be is a different conversation. Whether that's even the best idea is another conversation, but I don't think like the next couple weeks change like the thinking much there. Um, because the West is so good. Like you can be good and not make the playoffs, right? The Lakers are going to win. Oh, I don't know. What is it? 46, 47 games, something like that. Yeah. Like that's pretty damn. Like that's a good basketball team just because everybody. And the other part of it though, is that other than Portland, like, is there anybody in the West that's going away? Like Portland, whatever, put Portland aside, but all the 10 teams that are in the, the play in playoffs now, should be a reasonable approximation of themselves next year you know maybe the lakers take a little step back because of lebron's age maybe the warriors take a little step back because of steph age draymond age clay age but like utah's been really good the last two years until they've quit in the middle of the season or they've been good houston obviously showed they're houston's coming and they're all young memphis should probably be back with with you know a job back I'm terrified of Wemby, like then and San Antonio is going to probably do some things. So like outside of Portland, gotta, gotta I think real the West is just going to keep getting better and better. So I think that has to be part of the calculus also, but it's, so I don't, I don't think, and I hope the next like couple of weeks don't really change much because you see who this team is over the long stretch. And frankly, like, LeBron, you, you said, you know, hope for health, hope for better health next year, run it back, hope for better health. That doesn't seem like a great bet to me. Yeah, I mean, like Vando maybe much healthier. Gabe maybe doesn't miss the whole year. Rui was kind of in and out and banged up and, and such. But LeBron and AD played damn near the whole year. So 
I don't know that you can expect or plan to get that again. Yeah, I would say that for me, it does sort of depend on like if you lose in the nine ten game. I, I just like I, I, I think that's inexcusable, and I, I maybe that's that's a bit harsh, but this was a team that, I, and I know the betting uh, the the betting uh, like lines and stuff are are part influenced by the activity and there's a lot of laker fans a lot of laker fans betting uh yes. they're the most popular team in the league so like i, I know yes. some and sometimes like their lines i guess yes yes like the the, the lines and, and their expectations could be sometimes a, a little bit inflated entering the season but like i think most people had the lakers as like the third or fourth best team in the west i think everyone had denver number one Yes. Uh, I mean, some people had the Lakers number two, but like, I think there's a lot. Of I had the Lakers Phoenix. number one and Phoenix, the Warriors and the Lakers two, three, four in whatever order you want. And I thought those four teams and Boston and Milwaukee were the only six teams that could win the title. And that's so, still, yeah. that still might be true. I mean, it's still probably uh, true. Right? <laughs> no, I think there's, at this point, uh, it might be only two teams that would win the title. Yeah. One but, from the West um, and one from the East, but unfortunately. But, so like, I, I guess with that, with that context, like, and, and then again, I know there, there's been the injuries, but. I think a lot of teams would, or not a lot of teams, but like there are some teams that I think would would trade for the Lakers injury problems in terms of like having your two best players available as as much as they've had. Like Denver, I mean, Jamal Murray is going to miss, uh, end up missing 25, 26 games. Same thing yeah. uh, with, with Dallas and Kyrie. Like, uh, I mean, the, the Warriors would love to have had Draymond for, for seven games. I mean, that, games. that's so self-inflicted, like, not injury. That's but yes. self-inflicted, but yeah. like, Point being, like the fact that those two were healthy when you have not had them healthy in the last three years, and you could point to that, right? Because if LeBron misses 30 games, AD misses 30 games, like that is a legitimate thing that alters the course of your season. A lot of times sure. you are you're under 500 in those stretches that they're missing, but to have not just those two healthy, but D'Lo and Austin really healthy all year, those are your top four players by, I think, like pretty clearly, those, those are the top four. And yeah. to have those four healthy and to still be battling for like a nine or 10 seed and then potentially losing in that first play in, like I just, cause again, I, I think if, if we started the season over right now, I think the Lakers would probably be a home court team. If, if we were going like from this point on to yeah, another 82 games, like, yeah. and of course, like that's assuming LeBron and AD stay healthy again. And like, Obviously, they're, they're both kind of worn out. But like, you got LeBron playing 140. I guess what, games. what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> with the same rot, I'll, I'll just with the same rotation or, or with the current rotation. With the current rotation. If you yeah. if you went back to game one of the regular season and you gave the Lakers like the, the current rotation, and and let's just add Spencer Dinwiddie in place of Gabe Vincent. Like, I think that's a team that is a four or five seed at worst. Yeah, I think it's, in the, the, same I think it's in the Clippers Denver. I mean uh, Dallas conversation. Yes, exactly. So. Like the, the Lakers clearly have the talent and they've shown the high level ceiling of winning the season tournament, being one of the best clutch teams in the league, uh, being one of the best teams against teams with top 10 records in the league. That, mm -hmm. That's another thing that's kind of gone under the radar is like they've done really well against the best teams in the league. Uh, so like with that high end ceiling, uh, like the, the floor has obviously been pretty low. Yep. We could go through some of the, the bad losses that's and not... the fact that they're, <laughs> In the nine ten potentially, and like if you lose that, like I, I think you you kind of have to at least make the playoffs. And if you lose to Denver, you lose to Denver. You are probably going to lose to them at some point, whether it was round two, round three. If you draw them in round one, like it kind of is what it is. But um, now I don't know what those changes are. Like I guess it could be Darvin, although it seems like he's probably safe as of now, barring again maybe if you lose by forty in the nine ten game. Like I, I don't know. Um, or even if you lose in the set, like, I, I don't know, like it's, I've heard different things in terms of like his security and, and moving forward. But like, aside from that, I don't know what, like, I think you are going to yeah. turn over stones and, and look at what is potentially available this summer and, and see what you could get for those three picks. But I, maybe, like, maybe it turns up the aggression a little bit in terms of like running it back probably isn't good enough because we now have a sample size of like maybe you've just gotten stomped by Denver twice and you you just know that if you run it back you're probably going to get stomped by them again so you have to make some sort of adjustment uh but it's it's fascinating so yeah you kind of touched on it but like I, I view it as there's three paths forward there's run it back resign D'Lo resign Max maybe upgrade some of the minimum spots though several of those guys have player options 
Uh, option two is a middle size move, which is maybe like you, you flip Rui or Vando or, or a smaller P Gabe, like a smaller piece for a better rotation player, uh, maybe like a fifth starter or a, a better like six man uh, or the, the bigger move where you go three picks and potentially some of your young assets. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to match salary somehow as well. Mm -hmm. And you go for a third star or a, a high, high level role player, like a, a guy who can be uh, maybe not like star level, but someone who's clearly an upgrade over one of the spots in your rotation. Uh, although you're probably not, you're probably only giving up three picks for a star to be clear, but like you could also give up a pick or, or two picks like that. To me, mm -hmm. that's a little bit more than like a medium move um, with those three paths. Which one do you like best? And again, we don't know the context of like how they lose necessarily, but it just in, in terms of like the approach this summer, which path do you think you would go down? Huh. Um, I think it depends on which star. So here's the problem. And this, this is what happened. This was the rust problem. Um, if you are going to pick that model and I like, let's put star, like the, the superstar or star, like naming, let's put that aside. If you have three max level contracts on your team, whether they're stars or not, um, and whether they're, they're producing like stars or playing like stars or not, you are just by nature going to be pretty thin around the margins. Um, you have to nail especially, the, the role players. Yes, the, the especially guys, with like the especially with the especially with the the second apron. You know, fully in effect next season, it's going to be hard. So it doesn't mean I'm against it. I think there I think there are multiple paths. You know, the the Lakers won a title a couple of years ago with two stars and a bunch of high level rotation guys, high level role players, rotation guys that just fit well. So that works. Obviously you can do it with three stars or three max level contracts. You just have to get it right with the fit of those three guys and the pieces that you put around and the health of those guys. And so I think it matters pretty significantly. You know, if, if you're going to ask me which path do I think is the best, it matters who that third yeah, like that third theoretical star is and how well they fit. Um, so I think, I think like with in a vacuum, I think without knowing anything, I think my, my preference would be, you know, your medium plus move, right. Where you, it's a middle, some middle salary and maybe one pick uh, to upgrade, you know, your fourth best player, fifth best player, sixth best player, because like, LeBron and AD have still like even still have shown that the two of them together like I, I still you don't count them and look at some point it's just not going to work anymore but at some point you know father time comes for us all etc but I'm not betting against LeBron I'm you're gonna have to like show me he's dead and then like you know right I gotta, you gotta chop off his head and stick the stake in his heart and shoot him with the silver bullet and all those things and then I'm still going to have to like come back tomorrow and look again to make sure he's still in the ground. Right. So I'll believe LeBron's done when I see it. I mean, look, there's been a little slippage mostly on defense, but like, I still think that LeBron and AD can be the, the start of a team that's good enough to win the whole thing. Now there's the context of the rest of the league. The Celtics are damn good and they're not going anywhere. Denver's really good and they're not going anywhere. The rest of the West is not going anywhere that we just talked about. So I think, like depending on who that third star is um, and how well they fit, I, I think my preference is kind of the, the middle path, middle plus path, I guess, I think. Um, but yeah, there's not like you mentioned one thing. Look, I don't, I don't know anything about Darwin security, but like there's not going to be a lot that can be done with the roster, right? Like most of the, non-minimum contracts are are locked in and minimum guys are minimum guys for a reason right like sometimes you get lucky malik monk was is a really good example you get right but yeah and then you only get them for a year because if they outplay the contract you can't afford to pay them so right right gabe has a couple years left and austin's locked in and Rui's locked in and vando is locked in so those are all your contract you know like the mid contracts so i think the roster outside of trade i think the roster is kind of so, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, well, ideally that third player can shoot outside of like 14 feet. Uh, so if you add a, a third star, the that Lakers can shoot are like, sec- I think the Lakers are second in the NBA in three point percentage. It's- well, no, that, that was, that was a Russ reference of ideally the third star. If you hypothetically add one can shoot outside 14 feet. So it's it a better like fit a, around yeah. LeBron. Seems like a good idea. And, and, like a good idea. Um, and not someone who and, needs the ball all the time so that. Yeah. Well, so that's where like, and I'm going to, I want to be, I, I don't want to put you in a tough position. So I, I'm going to yeah, make could. it clear that I'm speaking here, but the, the names that are theoretically uh, supposed to be available on the market this summer are Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, Kyrie Irving, potentially depending on what happens with Dallas. Uh, and there's always a disgruntled star that like team X uh, falls short yeah. and they lose on the first there's round. Be the next or, yep. th- there's always like the next star that kind of the, the random guy that pops up. I think the Lakers yep. will be, if any of those three are available, the Lakers will be in the conversation and, and they will have a seat at that table. And, um, I think be a, a contender to land any of those three guys. Uh, I like the fit of all three of those guys. Theoretically, uh, Trey is like, on the one hand, I, I, the idea of a Trey AD pick and roll is like, I mean, that sounds amazing. On the other hand, he has been so heliocentric and, and just, you know, everything runs through him that he would probably have to make the biggest adjustment in terms of, uh, like, I think he clearly would be the the third best player of the the three. Uh, so he would have to take a back seat to some extent offensively in a way that he just has not shown uh, he can do yet. And that doesn't mean he can't, but he would have to probably study a lot of stuff in terms of like running, you know, moving off the ball and, and figuring out different ways to uh, leverage his, his speed and his shooting. Um, and he's obviously not going to be Steph and, and no one is Steph, but like, some of those things, I think he'd have to learn more creative ways to to kind of coexist next to LeBron and AD. With Kyrie, I mean, the, the fit with LeBron is there. He's played with a LeBron sort of, you know, uh, descendant in, in Luka, like a, a similar type of guy to, to some extent, uh, kind of like a LeBron-Harden hybrid. And then Donovan Mitchell, I, I think, is another interesting one, uh, just where, like, he... Again, with all three guys, I think they, they're properly slotted as like the number three option theoretically. Now, the asking price for all these guys is going to range, and um, there will like there are the, there's the Thunder, there's the Jazz, like there are other teams that can get involved in these talks that have more picks or have more young assets that can can offer better packages. But the Lakers are the Lakers; they will always be involved in in whenever a star is available, and um, so like. I guess for me, if if it's one of those three, I at least entertain the conversation and I, I think about like, you know, what am I giving up? What what is what does the roster look like? Yeah. Can I keep player X? Can I keep player Y? Um, I'm, I'm sure the Lakers would fight to keep Austin. Uh, although every team's gonna ask for Austin and three picks and and you know, so that's kind of its own haggling point there. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm with you. Like my ideal star ish ad would be like Mikhail Bridges. Uh, I think if you could add bridges and like keep D'Lo or Austin that and I'm not saying bridges to my knowledge not available and the asking price has apparently been insane so like I don't even know if three picks gets you bridges but like he's the type of guy where like he's a a clear upgrade on the wing I think he would slot properly next to LeBron and AD he would have to lean into some of the dirty work stuff that he was doing in Phoenix that he hasn't done as much in Brooklyn but like as that kind of um three and D guy who can take on more usage like I, I really like Mikhail Bridges as a potential fit again assuming you can keep at least one of Austin or D'Lo in this uh, scenario uh, but yeah I mean it's gonna be interesting to see kind of which guys pop up if the Lakers can get involved and what ends up happening but I think another thing that should be mentioned is like I, I think it might be time to invest in the big man spot and mm. um, like if, if you can get a a better big man to like, I, I've been on the train of 80 is a five play 80 at the five. And I still think he's a five, but the, the Lakers have had a, a rotating cast of vet minimum bigs that has just not really worked. And if it does like Jackson Hayes might be the best one and he has a player option. So he might opt yeah. out now and get like yeah. the mini mid-level from some team. Well, th- the other, summer. the other part of it is they, I mean, <clears throat> we can go back 
you know, whatever, a few years is that all of the all. Yeah. I mean, maybe all of the swings at uh, minimum bigs have been offensive players, right? Yes. Uh, Jackson's better offensively than he is defensively. He's not specifically an offensive player, but he's better offensively than defensively. Christian Wood is much better offensive player. Thomas Bryant, Damian Jones. I mean, even going back to JaVale. Drum, like, I mean, Dr- Drummond. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, you know, with, with the one the one exception being Dwight, and, you know, that was probably the best version of, you know, Dwight and, and next to AD was – the best version of the Lakers over the last five years. So even if it is a, another minimum guy, um, because if that's the only path to finding uh, another center in this off season, I think it probably makes sense to have that guy be a defensive guy, especially because if, if we've seen the last, however long it's been since Rui has been inserted into the starting lineup, it's been a complete 180, right? The, the Lakers are no longer a good defensive team and are no longer a terrible offensive team. It's like been a complete flip. So if that is going to be the presumable starting lineup going forward, I think it makes sense to around the margins, right? Especially like if Vando, you know, Vando is, is a guy that's significantly better defensively than he's offensively, but you know, he hasn't, he's barely played this year. So I think it does make some sense to go into next season or this off season and try to find some, you know, and, and look, it's hard with minimum guys, but um, try to find some guys that are more, you know, that are six ten, six eleven, seven feet that are, are more defensive oriented. Yeah. And, and I, I even think, uh, you know, I, I don't remember exactly if they're going to have the biannual again, because I, I believe it is every couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Every two um, years. So, not- well, cause Torian, but Torian is a free agent though. Correct. He doesn't. He he was. It was a one year deal. Oh yeah, correct. Yes. So correct. they might have it. Like I, I would maybe look at like even that yeah, kind of yeah. exception as like let's yeah. o- let's slightly overbid for a minimum. Even like a like whoever's the best minimum guy, let's slightly overpay him to just get him in, instead of him signing a minimum elsewhere and like just have that guy where um because I think we, we've seen it now. Like we, we touched on two and four, two and six, whatever you want to say with AD. Like if AD, I mean, they're fortunate AD has only missed six games because imagine if AD missed 20 games this season and let's say you had like trade the the Vando health for, for AD, like this team is, there might not even be in the top 10. Well, they're not like, guarding anybody. You, I mean, well, they're probably like an 11 seed yeah, uh, not, or a 12 seed anybody. And, and Houston's the 10 seed right now. So like they're like, they're toast if AD, like that's kind of what's, what saved the season in, in some ways is like AD being healthy has really propped them up um, and, and kept their defense at like, I know it's been bad overall the last couple of months, but like without AD, it's like, it's like, you know, kind of comical. So, well, I mean, uh, look, the worst, the Warriors shot a thousand percent from three, the best <laughs> shooting performance in NBA history. Literally. Part of that's yeah. like the, the Warriors and, but yeah, of course it's part that is fine, but like, it's not a coincidence. But part of, uh, but yeah. So, um, so be, before we get out of here quickly, uh, yeah. I wanted to hit on the new Orleans game. Um, so I'm going to make an ass out of you and me and Uh-oh. make an assumption here okay. that the Lakers beat the Grizzlies. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, although I the, Grizz- the Grizzlies have sneakily had frisky. some like competitive a little, a little games lately. Time. Yeah, a little frisky. Like, yeah. Um, and we don't, we still don't know the status of LeBron and AD for Friday. Like one would assume LeBron with a couple extra days, uh, Lakers have not practiced. They, they canceled practice yesterday. They canceled practice today. Uh, so like I, I know there's been a sickness going around like I'm starting to feel it a bit uh so assuming LeBron's playing 80 we have not gotten an update yet but let's just assume he plays too uh like they should be even without 80 they beat they just beat Memphis with in Memphis without 80 a couple weeks ago they should win that game uh, you, it's not a certain bad about Jake LaRavia Salty Aldama <laughs> this is unacceptable <laughs> Yes, Jake LaRavia is going to light them up uh that the we Lakers can, should we can win yes. that um so Lakers should win yes then it all comes down to the New Orleans game. And mm-hmm. depending on, again, there's several things out of their control in terms of, you know, does Denver drop a game? Does, does what happens with Minnesota and OKC? Uh, what happens with New Orleans, Sacramento, Phoenix, et cetera. Uh, but coming down to that final game, that is essentially going to be a play, another play-in game for the Lakers. Yes. It could end up being the difference between being the eight seed or the nine seed and having two cracks at the apple versus one. Um, yeah, or so the nine seed or the ten seed, yeah. 
or the nine seed or the 10 seed. And, yeah. and that, as we mentioned earlier, like home court could really matter for the Lakers in, in the play in. Um, so I know we, we touched on New Orleans earlier in terms of like kind of just them as a team, but this matchup specifically, uh, mm -hmm. like how, how do you kind of view that in a, I guess, a play in before the play in scenario? Yeah. So we don't and know. We don't, we don't know, know Brandon B. Ingram yet. Yeah. We don't know BI. Um, but what it comes down to for me is that if we're going to, let's assume all three of them play, let's assume LeBron, AD and BI all play. What it comes down to is there. I trust LeBron and AD in a one off that you have to win. Like if there's, if there's some stakes that they need to win a one off, I'm going to take them against basically anyone. So yeah. in a one off um, and look, yeah, it was for AD wasn't there on on Tuesday. Um, LeBron showed up. AD that was kind of and there's been some games earlier in the year where it was like you kind of need to win this one. You know, one of the Sacramento, the last Sacramento game being one of them. Well, the last two Sacramento games. Yeah, fair enough. Yes, but I am just going to rely on and also because that's the construction of this team, right? Like I am going to rely on LeBron and AD if uh what is it Sunday and all I think all the games are at twelve thirty Pacific. Every game in the NBA is at twelve thirty yeah. Pacific. Uh, so, so there could be it's no shenanigans cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like uh, they do in soccer. Um, yeah. I'm just going to, I, I believe in LeBron and AD in a one game setting. I'm taking LeBron and AD. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sticking to, uh, I mean, as I said, I drew the delineation between Kings and the Pelicans versus the Warriors and the Suns in terms of a road single elimination game. Uh, in terms of favoring the Lakers or the opponent. So I would favor the Lakers in that one. Uh, I will say the, the teams have played three games this season. All three have been blowouts for the home team. Uh, and yeah. technically in Vegas, it was like, okay, it wasn't in, in – but like Vegas was very pro Lakers. It's super yeah, – it's it a four-hour yeah. drive from L.A. So like yeah. uh, basically a second home for the Lakers, like Hawaii, Vegas – I mean, anywhere on the West Coast really is like a second home for the Lakers. Uh, well, also, so, <laughs> Washington, D.C., Atlanta. Memphis. I mean, OK, so most <laughs> most places in the United States, yeah. uh, other than like Boston, are a second home for the Lakers. Uh, so with that, like, I guess the, the, the one like pause would or my two pauses would be uh, the Lakers have had some bad blowout losses in New Orleans in, in a, mm -hmm. the past couple of years and like some of that was not with Darvin. Some of that was like injury related. Like there's a lot of factors and context that goes into that. But like, that's just one thing of like the Pelicans have played well at home. The curse of Smoothie the King. And yeah, <laughs> um, uh, the, the curse of the AD trade. Uh, and, and then two, it would just be like the most Lakers thing ever for Brandon Ingram to return in the season finale and drop like 35, <laughs> like with, no, the, with like the Lakers. Injury I don't like this. At all. I don't like this at all. This is how it always goes, right? Like, yeah, all, like all, all of a sudden, Dre, you know, player X Draymond is five against five. the Lakers. They, they missed the last five games. They come back against the Lakers. They missed the next three games. Like, that's how it's gone all season. It, it's pretty hilarious. Uh, but no, I, I'm with you. I would pick the Lakers. Uh, I think, I just ultimately think, like, as good as New Orleans is defensively, they have a lot of wiry and, and slender yes. and, like, rangy Jones, guys yeah. yep. that don't match up well with Trey, LeBron yeah. and AD. And like those guys aren't going to bother them. And like, yes, Zion is a problem. Like, yes, the Pelicans are a good team in, in terms of points in the paint and they're physical and they're big. But in terms of actually like defending, like we saw what LeBron did in the IST. What last time these two teams played in LA, or that was the last matchup, period. Mm -hmm. uh, Lakers had all five starters go for 20 plus first team to do that since 1993. So like I, I just don't think New Orleans can defend the Lakers. And if LA can bring the requisite focus and energy and effort in a single elimination game essentially i yeah. i would pick the lakers to win that game so my biggest uh, my biggest concern against new orleans is the pels on the offensive glass against the lakers that's that's my biggest concern and, and the three-point shooting of like if, if like let's just say kind of similar to the warriors game zion gets it going early he gets quick six eight points now you're starting to converge on the paint and we know the lakers will help off shooters <laughs> Uh, aggressively <laughs> uh, and if the 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 if the data says uh this guy is like a shaky shooter they will leave him alone and once that guy hits three four five threes that can snowball and then mm -hmm. that guy's in a rhythm so that's that's like the other thing here that 
that's where like being in a single elimination format is just anything like you're one bad ad poking the eye away from the season being over right and right th that's now happened three times there, there was a third time that he, he ended up being okay didn't miss the rest of the game but like uh i mean that's it's kind of a concern now i wonder has if he, he had a foul it. called on any of them i don't i don't think, think so. so or maybe the over. maybe the one he didn't yeah i, I think he's <laughs> the, over the one three he didn't on, get injured on <laughs> right i think he's over three on on those he might be um, although I will say like my one thing with that is I've seen people complaining about the, the non-call. I'm like, okay, well let's say they got the foul call, like 80 still injured. So maybe you got two free throws, yeah. but yeah, like, he's still, yeah. like it doesn't take yeah, away the fair. injury. Yeah. That's um, fair. although again, like it's obviously better to get the two free throws, but, um, Aaron, uh, I'm sure you got better things to do. I have <laughs> a flight to Memphis right. to catch. Yeah. I'm going to watch hoops so. tonight. Gonna, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big night uh, again, yeah. uh, by the time you guys are, listening to this the the results will be out but we're recording this ahead of golden state portland which is a huge game for the lakers and new orleans sacramento also yeah. a huge game for the lakers it's basically going to determine who the lakers are rooting to lose out is whoever loses that game uh yeah, but aaron right. thank you so much for joining me today uh where can the good people find you on social media and, and uh, just you know i don't i'm not that interesting in real life or in so on social check media, out his but... instagram <laughs> You can check out my Instagram, which is the Instagram same stories as my where Twitter. It's at. Instagram stories is all right. Yeah, well, I, DMs, you still right? need to teach DMs, me TikTok. Yeah. I say this all the time. Yeah, the DMs are. I will are good one day. Too. Uh, those will not be exposed ever. Uh, so you can uh, at Aaron Larsoul on. I don't. I do have TikTok. I don't use it uh, on Instagram and uh, on Twitter. Is at Aaron Larsoul. That's where you can keep up with me if you are so inclined. And uh, appreciate you having me on as always. Appreciate you, man.